Good morning, everyone. Welcome to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. My name is Graham Day, and once again, that is not Bibby. We have a very special guest in the house with us this morning. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, shout out to Dan from Insert Coin. How's things, Dan? Hello. Hey. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. You? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, I'm assuming you can all hear you, Dan. Do we sound okay? Do you know, I'm going to test the audio just to make sure that we don't have... Do we sound okay? Uh, Do you know... Yes, no, everything's fine. Nice, all the audio is good this morning. That's great. I was just telling Dan before we went live that we occasionally <laughs> have issues with the audio, but it seems good. It seems good. Uh, everyone, welcome in to Twitch. If, if you are new here, my name is Graham, and we do go live each and every single weekday on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads five days a week, Monday to Friday. Let me just shout out a few people that are in the chat. Kulan, good morning. Uh, as always, in nice and early. He says, hello. Good morning. Mr. Jim Butter's dropping the Prime sub as well for six months. Always looking forward to this when I can. Good morning. All right. Um, Gagad says, good morning, gents. Lithram is in. Um, you do realise that Bibby's not here, you know. It's fine. Uh, good morning, Lithram. How are you doing? Um, Mr. Tassim Anvia, noted in industry leaker, uh, says, Dan, you handsome man. Love that man and his face. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and hi, Graham, as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he knows what side he spreads butter. He's, he's got He kind of said the same thing yesterday. We had um, one of the community guys yesterday, <laughs> Chappers, who was on the show with us yesterday, and, and asked him, said something along the lines of, look at that beautiful face. Oh, and there's Graham. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Two days in a row. <laughs> Love you both. There we go. See, that's better. That's better. Uh -huh. uh, but anyway, if you are new here, as mentioned, um, my name is Graham. This is Dan, and uh, we are Ice Cream Uploads. Well, well, Dan is today. Uh, we've taken him. We've taken him. Sorry, <laughs> insert coin. His hours now. Uh, but in true <laughs> ice creamy fashion, this is the scoop. The UK's number one video game podcast. Even if we do say so ourselves. Uh, we are going to give you our thoughts and impressions on the biggest, the best and the breaking stories in the world of video games over the next hour or so. And we want your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions. So if you're live in the chat, please feel free to use your voice on behalf of everyone watching and listening on demand. And speaking of on demand, we turn this live stream into a podcast, a video for YouTube and an audio podcast that goes on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud and Google Play. So if you are in the chat, please feel free to use your voice on behalf of everyone else. Before we start though, First things first, exclamation mark, insert coin. If somebody can be nice enough to just type that in the chat, that'd be very nice. And you will know a little bit more about, about Dan and where he comes from. And they're nice, nice. Do it, do it, do it. Someone do it. Um, <laughs> Banana11F, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Good morning. But uh, Dan, tell us a little bit about Mr. Dan Long and insert coin. Right. Oh, well, um, yeah, I'm the head of comms at insert coin. And uh, I've been there since day one. And yeah, uh, basically, my 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 job involves every part of what we do. I guess we sort of from working with people who uh, like getting licenses and and working with people who we who we collaborate with, all the way through to pretty much if you've seen a tweet or an Instagram post or a Facebook post or a, or a stream, I'm involved with those in some way, shape or form. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of like the I used to be the voice of Insert Coin, so it's uh, I'm not sure I still am, but it's, kind of, <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's that that's kind of the honorary title, I guess. Hey, I don't know if you've seen it as well from when we were having the uh, the talk pre-show. I uh, may also be representing IC just because I know that you were on the show this morning, so I'm full on Ghost of Shim nice. out as well. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, so. Synergy. Exactly. You, you can you, ha you can have to go all out. There you go. Um, just tinker with my lights. There we go. All is good. Uh, if you are in the chat, like I say, please feel free to uh, get involved as we go through the show. And if you've got any questions for Dan, uh, feel free to throw them as we go. Obviously, we will go through the news as we usually do. Yeah. Um, just one thing you said there. You mentioned something about streams. Uh, I know we, we, we spoke about it before. So any, any plugs for any future streams on Insert Coin? Yeah, we've got... Um... We do regular streams every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, um, and we have some amazing guests on Mondays and Wednesdays, including your good selves. You're you're one of our regular guest hey. hosts as well. Um, and uh, yeah, and on Fridays it's the lovely Chris Slight and the slightly less lovely me. <laughs> um, we do we do an hour at lunch times on a Friday, um, as uh, like basically that's like the the main stream, even though it's like a very small one, um, that we just talk about what's going on at Insert Coin that week, and uh, then just play a game 
just for an hour and normally it descends into some kind of chaos and <laughs> chat about about snacks as well normally um with snack chat tm um uh but yeah so yeah it's 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 good fun it's kind of a new thing for us we started that middle of last year um so we're still pretty small and sort of growing but yeah it's uh it's good fun but yeah it's a uh, official insert coin on on the old twitch um and yeah we stream every every monday wednesday and friday nice nice so uh, if you want uh, chaos and snack chat then then stick around and ask your uploads <laughs> or go to insert coin because they sound very similar <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but, um, very very similar kind of ethos <laughs> Cool. Well, we will jump into some news, everyone that's in the chat. Good morning. Banana says, I have a question. Do you like people that stutter? I, uh, yes. <laughs> what? I don't understand the meaning <laughs> behind that. But yes. Yes, of course I do. Uh, Steel Bonsai, good morning-ish. Good morning-ish. Yes, 10 a.m.-ish. I know. Uh, Lake says, good morning as well. Good morning, Lake. How's things? How are we all doing? Are we good? Uh, Gagad, I'm not sure if I caught your tweet, uh, your message, but good morning as well. Good morning. Okay, we will jump into some news. You may have seen, obviously, we posted the lead story out on our social medias, which are at Ice Cream Uploads across the board, exclamation mark, socials in the chat. We'll give you the social links. Um, today's lead story is a revisit of a story that we've picked up a few times over the last few months. This is just a little bit of a snippet more, but one of the names within the story kind of gives it a little bit more weight is a word that we go for obviously it's the story if you have seen on social media is the switch pro the new advanced switch that is rumored to be coming so let's jump into the news also shout out to mr gary clark i don't know if he's in the chat this morning but or gallic clark as he's known in the chat um because he provided the, the us with this story on our discord you guys can share the stories that you want us to discuss on discord too so let's jump into the first bit of news this one is written by Apologies if I get this name wrong. Takashi Mochizuki and Sohi Kim at Bloomberg. I think I did a decent enough job there. I'll take that one. Um, yeah. Nintendo plans Switch model with bigger Samsung OLED display. So we've touched on this previously. A Switch Pro or a 4K Switch has been rumored for a while, but this one says Samsung display will start production of 7-inch panels in June. Gaming giant aims to propel Switch against uh, the Xbox and PS5. I won't read through the full article because this is Bloomberg, which is a little bit heavier than we usually read on ice cream. But sometimes you have to go to different sources to get the best news. So this one says, um, Nintendo plans to unveil a model of its Switch gaming console equipped with a bigger Samsung OLED display this year, hoping the larger touchscreen can prop up demand in time for the holidays. Uh, people familiar with the plan said, Samsung will start mass production of 7-inch 720p resolution OLED panels as early as June with an initial monthly target of just under a million units, said the people who ask not to be identified discussing internal matters, obviously, as you would. Uh, the displays are slated for shipment to assemblers around July, the people said. Representatives for Nintendo and Samsung Display decline, declined to comment. Nintendo seeks to sustain a Switch lineup that continues to sell well against the Xbox and PlayStation thanks to pandemic-era breakout hits like Animal Crossing. Are you aware of Animal Crossing, Dan? I know you are. <laughs> um, no, not at all. <laughs> um, and a chip crunch that's plagued uh, supply of rival devices. But gadget, uh, but the gadget is now into its fifth year. While Microsoft Corp and Sony Corp both have new and more powerful machines in the market, the gaming community has speculated online about the introduction of an OLED or an or. or Organic light emitting diode, which is what all it stands for. But Nintendo has st uh, stayed mum. Wow, that's that's an interesting kind uh, kind of phrase. Is that yeah. is stayed mum? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Well, Nintendo hasn't said anything. There we go. And President Shintaro Furukawa said in February his company has no plans to announce a new Switch anytime soon. Samsung's involvement is the strongest indication that Nintendo is serious about updating the console and on a large scale. Okay, we'll pause there. The article does go on a little bit further, but we will pause there. We kind of got what we need uh, from that. So we've spoken about it before, Nintendo Switch Pro. We've spoken about it probably about 16 months now when we first started to have conversations around it, um, whether it could be 4K, whether it would be bigger, better, uh, improved battery, and all of those things like that. And it's, it's all kind of been hearsay. We've, we've had industry analysts saying 2021 will be the year it hits, but now we have a name put against production. Samsung will be making a screen. 720p resolution in hand, but OLED, which would be better for battery, but 4K on uh, a TV screen if docked. Would that uh, tickle your fancy, Mr. Long? 
Um, yeah, I think so. It's it's a difficult one. We've got um, we're we're a very Nintendo family, and we've we've got like four in the, in the household. <laughs> so it's so it's kind of like there's there's a double edged thing of like oh now I've got to get another one. Um, but <laughs> but whether or not there'd be like a, a perhaps a, a move towards it being like the family one, and that would be the main one that's plugged in all the time because most of the others are lights. Um, I mean it's. I think there's a lot, it, it's obviously got a lot to catch up with in terms of like the PS5 and the, and the Series X in terms of like oomph behind it um, and, and sort of output and display. Um, but I don't know whether a lot of Nintendo games are so beyond the need for graphical capabilities. Is that, is that going to be a, is it going to be a big selling point? I guess it probably will be for anyone who, who's had one for a long time. Or who hasn't yet picked one up? If there's anyone who, who doesn't have one, um, <laughs> but but it's uh, yeah, I, I think it's it's certainly interesting. Uh, uh, what what I'd want to know more than anything is is it going to be like a, a step change rather than like a wholesale change? So more like what Xbox are doing uh, have done with like you know you can everything's backwards compatible and you can just still play the same thing, or are they thinking actually this is going to be a because Nintendo are quite uh, unique, aren't they, in terms of how that they 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 do sort of jump from one to the other, from you know discs to cartridge back yeah. again, kind of thing, and whether or not it would go down that kind of route. But I would um, I would see them. Yeah, in my mind, I would see it as being um, the the was it the two DS and three DS where they were they they offered different perspectives, but still in the same generation. If the if for want of a yeah. right right word so i, I would think i i think that's what it has to be doesn't it because otherwise people are going to go particularly anyone who bought one at the start of lockdown it's going to be absolutely <laughs> <to> the, they've, <laughs> they've had a console for like a year and then it then it's going oh surprise here's another one <laughs> yeah um, we just managed yeah. to get the uh animal crossing new horizon version of the switch which was like gold dust but can't play anything yeah. on it nice great <laughs> <laughs> wonderful uh and, it, and even the people i mean they've just just released was it the Mario version over the last couple of months, um, or was it within the last month the yeah. the Mario yeah. Red and Blue Switch? So if you bought one of those and that didn't work, you would be absolutely fuming. So you'd you'd think that would be the case. Obviously, th this article goes on to talk about how they expect it to be um, Christmas sort of time before the end of the year, so that it will be in the market uh, in time for um, winter sales period, which is kind of kind of what you'd expect. Uh, it's interesting yeah. that you mentioned. Um, you have four in the house, so this would become, say, like the house console, yeah. um, which makes absolute sense from a user point of view. But it's it's quite funny that the switch, the idea of the switch, is that you don't have a house console and you can do do whatever you need. Yeah, yeah, need to yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's one of the things of like um, having started the streaming is that the the light you can't you can't stream from, and that's like the that's it's the annoyance, I guess, of of the light more than anything else is that it's not i guess fundamentally it isn't meant to be have as much going on with it but yeah it is like a it'd be it'd be great to have that as a as, a, as an option for our for our family kind of thing <laughs> yeah see i've never i never even considered that because i mean i we do have a switch but i'm very much a um uh like a Michael Bay gamer. I'm the one that plays the the big, loud, <laughs> bombastic sort of games. So, so Switch. Whilst it, I've had some amazing experiences playing things like Luigi's Mansion and and so on on the Switch. It tends to be one that I I use when I'm traveling and things like that. And naturally, in today's yeah, yeah. world, I never use it anywhere because <laughs> I don't go anywhere. Um, it's very cheap. But yeah, the, the Switch Lite looks like exactly like the version of the Switch that is built for me. I mean, we have the normal, uh, the original Switch, but the Lite look, just looks, yep. looks nice. But yeah, like you say, you can't dock it, so you can't stream from it. So it, it just instantly it cuts me off, which is a shame, which is a shame. Jumping into the chat, though, Mr. Jim Butter says a Switch Pro would be very welcomed and needed. Means their games can really push forward and be grander. Breath of the Wild had some lag problems. Would be nice. Hope it's true. I mean, that's the thing. One of the things you mentioned then, Dan, is... is do Nintendo games really need the graphics? Um, they probably don't. But is it is that a case of chicken? Like, is it chicken and egg? Do, do the games not need the graphics, or do the games not have the graphics because they can't not have the graphics? I mean, it, it, maybe maybe a bit of both. Maybe 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 more. Yeah. 
maybe more the form. Maybe they don't really need them they, and they just work within the styles that they need so they're not as intensive. That said, um, and I, I feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, if uh, if I'm taking this the wrong way, but there was, uh, was it the latest Pokemon games had issues with rendering distances? I know there was a lot of complaints. Um, it might not be the latest Pokemon games. Uh, if Enix was in the chat, he'd absolutely be able to, to, to clarify. But certain <laughs> things like character popping and draw distance um, were were really bad and was that just just from a programming and development side of things or was that a hardware limitation because if it, if it was the hardware limitation then naturally the pro means that that kind of stuff is just ironed out instantly you don't have to worry about yeah. characters just popping in when you get within 10 feet of them uh, you can see them in the distance as you walk up to them so having the extra processing power would help with that for sure yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, Mr. C says, I really want this Switch Pro. I reckon it would be it would get me playing more Nintendo stuff. I have a Switch Lite, but I always favored my PS5, Series X, or PC over playing it. The Pro with the 4K bells and whistles need slash want. If it launches with Breath of the Wild 2, sexy time. <laughs> Easy tiger. It's, <laughs> it's not that kind of show. I do wonder if that I wonder if that will be like I think that is the that's what, you know, if I was doing it, that's what I would do is, you know that's how you get people back onto it again and pick up the new one is you've got to have that big title for it. Cause I think that's, they didn't have that when they did the Wii U, if that, when that came out and that kind of, obviously that was like a real stutter in their sort of progress. And I think that might be the, the thing that they do is like have that. They had that amazing start with, I mean, they only had Breath of the Wild pretty much, didn't they, when they when the Switch came out? Yeah, so it was, effectively. I think if they, sort of <laughs> rep, if they replicate that again, I think there, there's, there is a yeah, diversity of games is important, but if you've got that one killer app that is like the thing that everyone wants, then that would make a huge difference. It's, it's interesting to see how um, how the Wii U had um, quite a lot of decent games. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I, I exactly line what you've just said. When I think of the Wii U, I think of Breath of the Wild, and then can't really think of anything else. Uh, but <laughs> I, I, I think it was earlier on this week we had Enix as a guest host, who, um, and he he was saying it's it's quite um, interesting to see how many good games there were on the Wii U, but because the hardware was limited and there wasn't enough games around them that a lot of those games and those experiences just kind of died off until they're now being ported over to the Switch. Um, so yeah, it's partially not having the games, partially not having the audience, but if you have the audience, which the Switch absolutely does now, I think, is, is, is it top, yeah. top three selling consoles of all time? I think so, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, which is huge. Um, so having that up there, ha sticking a pro in that, obviously will churn it, Closer to top two or top one selling consoles of all time. Um, was it DS first, PS2 second, and then Switch third, I think is what it was. Maybe maybe something along those lines. Or maybe it's behind the PS4. Anyway, it, sell, it sold a lot. That's all we need to know. Um, uh, so, yeah, it, it would be interesting to see how... I think they would have to launch it with something big. Obviously, is it is it this year that, that, that is the Zelda anniversary? Not Zelda. Yes. Yeah, Zelda, yeah, that's the one I'm looking yeah, at. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, 35th, is it 35th this year, or is that, or 30th? No, I think I I think I think you're right, I think it is 35th. I, I, I may, it, could, it could be 30th. <laughs> <laughs> I thought 30th, uh, 35th, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, there's 25 years of Pokemon as well, so you yeah. kind of think, I mean, there's huge titles there. If you've got uh, Breath of the Wild 2, um, plus Pokemon, which is which is huge on its own, um, yeah. alongside a new Switch, then that's an absolutely massive year for Nintendo there with that console. Um, jumping back into the chat, uh, Mr. Gary Clark is here. Thank you. This story was submitted by Gary Clark, so good morning, Gary. I'll read. Um, most people play it docked anyways, uh, plus would be good when games get ported over, like Doom and Witcher 3, for example, would be able to not cut down as much if I if it had more power. Doom, most people play it docked. I assumed it was the other way around, um, only because I, I've only played it docked to have, say, Mario Kart sessions with, with Chloe and Danielle when we've been in the house, so I've not really played too much of it docked. But then again, I'm not your stereotypical Switch gamer, so I don't know. Uh, how do you play it most often, Dan? Uh I think like we've got we've got one that's like the the main console like the the sort of dockable con console, um, and then we've got three lights. So I mean, my one's a light, so I that's how I use it. But um, my daughter, our oldest daughter, has got 
sort of control of, of the main one and she <laughs> tends to use she tends to use it sort of mainly not docked um but then that's because she's got like the, it would otherwise be docked to our main sort of family tv yeah. so it would be i suppose it would be sort of like more rude just to come in and <laughs> oh, i'm gonna play this now um not that we'd mind but it's kind of like uh it's a it's a bold move, right? It's just to go into someone's <laughs> like, to power like, move. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, th- I think it's like a. It kind of depends on the game as well. I think Animal Crossing is one that sort of lends itself better to being played handheld, maybe. And then there's other games that are, are much sort of they work better. Like um, Breath of the Wild is one I think sort of tends to work better on on the bigger screen. So. Um, but I guess it's a personal choice on how you like to play them, I suppose. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, speaking of Breath of the Wild, Asim says, I would say Christmas period release with Breath of the Wild 2 as a launch title would make sense. Before that, seems like Nintendo trying to eke out as many sales of the original light as possible with different models. Yes, for sure. Uh, West says, oh, hello. Um, I can't do the baby shout, so you'll have to take that. But good morning, West. Welcome in, dude. Welcome back. Uh, Asim says, I'll, I'll, I'll have you know... Super Bomberman R was the go-to title on launch. Not saying that because I'm in the credit, obviously. For sure. Absolutely. 100%. No, I agree. <laughs> uh, Mr. Jim Butt says, Pokemon Sword and Shield were bad and laggy at times. Pop in, stutter, and the graphics at times were terrible and fan- uh, fans gave Game Freak massive flack. I don't know if it was programming or other limitations. It was a good playable game, but it does have its problems. Um, did I believe that got like improved, though, right? Uh, as time went on, as far as I'm aware. Uh, yeah, we'll just say it did. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, <laughs> I've never played my uh, original Switch docked. Never. See, Mr. Gary Clark wow. just, just, I mean, he just doesn't want a Switch. He just wants a one directional console. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. Chappers says, all right, yesterday's guest host is in, the, is in the chat. Good morning, Chappers. Well, speaking of handheld games then, okay, let's use that as an opportunity to jump forward. I mean, handheld gaming has been a thing for a while. And if you're a PlayStation uh, fan, then handheld gaming has kind of been there. Uh, for a while. Uh, I mean, I say kind of. The Vita exists-ish. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how many games you've got, for it, but it is there. It is there. Um, but if you want to get your hands on, this is the world's cheesiest link, I apologise. If you want to get your hands <laughs> on Sony hardware, then, well, do you know what? Maybe you don't even need to touch the hardware as Sony's controller tech is literally bananas. This is written by uh, Brendan Sinclair at gamesindustry.biz. Um, let me just jump through. And I'll, we'll read through the intro because it gives a nice little bit of uh, uh, placement uh, so, and context. Games industry patents are an interesting mix of futuristic ideas, practical applications, and utter nonsense. They can tip a company's hand as to what it's planning next, given an uh, idea of how they're thinking about certain parts of their business. All let us revisit old successes and see how they were originally envisioned. Patent trawling is intended to be a mix of all of the above. Not everything featured here has seen a commercial release or ever will, but it will hopefully offer some insight into why the industry is the way it is and where it might be headed next. So for those that don't know, patent trawling is um, a series of articles on games industry biz where they do exactly that. They troll through patents to try find uh, nuggets or gems of interest like this. Forget PlayStation. We want Plantain station. Yeah, there you go. Um, game controllers have too much technology in uh, in them these days. Wireless connections, analog sticks, D-pads, shoulder and face buttons, touch pads, microphone speakers, haptic feedback. In the end, modern peripherals are often complicated, expensive, and a, hap- uh, a hassle to keep charged. Sony apparently wants to do something about that according to a recently published patent application. Uh, quote, it would be desirable if a user could use an inexpensive, simple, and non-electronic device as a video game peripheral, the application reads. The the patent disclosure seeks to address uh, or at least alleviate some of the identified uh, above identified problems. End quote. As you might have guessed from the headline, Sony's answer to the problem is bananas. Well, not just bananas. What the application describes is a method that works with any non-luminous passive object being held by a user. It could be a mug, a pen, a glass, or, as in the investor's preferred examples, bananas and oranges. Uh, 
A camera gets an image of the item in the user's hands and tracks the items based on pixels, contours, and or colors in the images rather than QR codes or other such tracking techniques. A game could either be trained to recognize objects as controllers or pre-configured such that users are told ahead of time what could be used as a controller. The application doesn't mention it specifically, but this latter application sounds more like a cost-effective way to approximate toys to life functionality in games. Uh, so obviously toys to life for those that don't know what that means that means things like disney infinity and um amiibo and, and things like that um the application goes on to discuss ways to infer the banana's movement in 3d space which might be used to control the in-game camera replace a flight stick or pause the game if the banana were to be set down out of the camera's view there's also a nice section on two object controller which instantly translates to us yes you can dual wield bananas <laughs> this is incredible uh, the patent application also raises the possibility of holding two oranges and pretending they're a steering wheel or using them for battle zone style tank controls. Uh, of course, sometimes motion controls aren't going to get the job done and that's when this patent application proposes mapping virtual buttons onto the banana, possibly with the help of a camera mounted in a VR headset. Unfortunately, there's no telling if Sony's patent application will ever... Oh my God, that's incredible. I'm going to read this whole sentence again. Unfortunately, there's no telling if Sony's patent application will ever bear fruit. <laughs> <laughs> or its players <laughs> for that matter. So let's take a look at some patents more closely related to a product than produce. We'll stop there. We don't need to look into the PSVR 2 possibilities, but could you see yourself controlling your uh, your PS5, your <laughs> your Xbox with a banana? What are your thoughts? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Um, I think there's there's definitely something there in terms of, you know, controllers are so expensive now. In You know, when you actually look at what, like, adding more to like make make it like a four player game or or something like that if you've got the ability to turn something that's already existing in your in your house into a into a makeshift controller that's that's an amazing idea really it, um not sure how it would work or, or how reliable that would be i mean it sounds it sounds weirdly sort of similar to sort of stuff that connect was doing where it was like sensing where stuff was and mapping it um and it's that weird thing that video games seem to do every so often where you get like a something that like was on a system ages ago and never really took off then comes back in another major way it comes back <laughs> as, a, as something different um but yeah I, I, I mean the possibilities of stuff are like are like crazy really in terms of what we could do and vr is kind of where you sort of think that could really work as something that because that that's another set of controllers at the moment, isn't it? So, whether or not in, in any new iteration that that makes it more flexible, and so it sort of makes uh, a more accessible thing to get a VR headset, and because you don't need fancy controllers, you can just pick up something that's already in your house. I mean, that could that could be a real boom to to like their marketing of how VR is much more accessible. Just just have a bottle of drinking water in your hand and use that as your controller multitask yeah 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 uh the downside though as asim says is this would probably inflate the price of bananas people ransacking their <laughs> local tesco's asda and so on scalpers too <laughs> yeah yep. i mean the idea of having a banana as a controller for me is quite appealing oh nice nice <laughs> I like it Sorry, I apologise for everyone. <laughs> uh, this, this is this is bizarre. I mean, it's it's clearly the idea of patents is you want to kind of get things out without giving too much away. So maybe the idea of using a banana is a little bit of the deflection stuff, but it's so amazing. Yeah. It just it is. It it's, just fits, doesn't it? It just fits as a as an idea. Everyone everyone has done that with like they've used a banana as like a makeshift gun at some point as a kid <laughs> or a grown up. I was gonna say I was gonna say but, you said yeah. as a kid that's but, kind of like ah. <laughs> but but it's but everyone's done that and so it, it's kind of like the universal kind of thing as of like hey look I've got a gun kind of thing. <laughs> Pep, yeah. so for VR for for a VR game that could be absolutely perfect. Just uh, see if I can find the PS3 concept controller. Because uh, oh yeah, they, they were they were they were bananas. They were like really <laughs> like sort of. They're actually I've got the the PS5 one here, and it wasn't a million miles away. It's like it's got that weird sort of like 
scooped shape, if I remember rightly. Yeah, there we go. It's uh, on the screen there. It's it's amazing because I, I did see this at the time and I've kind of lost it out of memory. And now looking at it now, <laughs> I don't I don't remember it being so steering wheel. <laughs> it's like a half, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a half wheel. And then you but look, is, you kind of look at that, and then you think actually you can see elements of the PS5 one in that it's... where they've they've obviously sort of I, I reckon they sort of had that in mind that was possibly an idea they were thinking of well, someone's made a, this, a back. ps5 boomerang uh, there you go there you go it's it's, it's the same thing <laughs> yeah that's that yeah okay i'm glad i'm glad we didn't get the, the boomerang to that extent but uh you know what we're getting bananas <laughs> so so it's it's come fu- well not yeah. full circle but but half circle at least it's come, it's come back like a boomerang <laughs> Oh, that's genius. That's genius. Um, uh, does this mean the return of Ape Escape? Good point. <laughs> um, I suppose it would save on the passion when you get angry and throw the controller at the wall. I mean, I suppose like you can you can have the conversations of how many how many PS4 controllers have you been through? Well, how many PS5 controllers have you been through? Well, it's my third one this week because my last one you know just kind of went moldy <laughs> oh god i need to get another banana sat there with bunches of bananas you get you get hungry halfway through that's it just nibble on the end of the controller jobs are good yeah, that's it it's done <laughs> um gun or a phone every time for a banana says chap has no middle ground that's it, right? <laughs> no, that's it. um uh, I see that, and I think Batman. It does look like a Batman throwing thing. To be fair, it does. Uh, Luke Pastille says in capital letters with a full stop, "Get out." Uh, so I'm assuming my appealing pun didn't go down very well. Sorry, Luke. <laughs> um, also, what does everyone think of the um, subscriber loyalty badges? Obviously, we've had them in for a while, um, but they were all kind of similar because you, you design an image that's that's I don't know, 70 pixels by 70 pixels, but then when you squash it down to 18 pixels, they all look a little bit the same. So hopefully, they look a little bit different whilst having some consistency then so shout out to uh, mr craig james pitt our chief colorer inner at uh, ice cream uploads he absolutely loves to be called that by the way um uh, as, he's, <laughs> as he's made them look nice 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 um so yes you can potentially uh probably not because it's just patent stuff but you can potentially control your technology using a banana or other things it does it does look pretty cool i do I, I like the idea, and the fact that there's clearly something there. Because as you mentioned with 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 Connect, Connect was yeah. hugely ahead of its time. It was such a good uh, piece of hardware to say it was two generations old. Now there was there's a reason why when Connect was kind of discontinued, that they were all bought up by um, modders and and entrepreneurs because the the technology in that, that their double camera stuff was so far advanced. So there's definitely something in there in terms of mapping yeah. objects using cameras and and having digital buttons projected onto things probably not in a world where we can use it yet but but yeah full on there's, there's definitely something there but but for now it all just seems a bit well as they said it bananas <laughs> <laughs> it's very science fiction isn't it it's it's there's i'm kind of i'm of an age now where i kind of see stuff that was in films when i was like a kid and it's like oh yeah no that's real now it's like, <laughs> well that's terrifying and but you can kind of see how like these things are so outlandish now it's like yep no that's probably going to happen in the next five ten years that that'll be that'll be it that'll be real it's like when you yeah particularly science fictionists uh fiction sort of genres and and those miraculous i mean star trek's the, the key one having a communicator a device that you hold in your hand that allows you to contact other people oh imagine yeah. that imagine that he says grab, <laughs> grabbing his iphone <laughs> yeah bizarre it's, it's amazing um but anyway let's move ahead so sony's controller tech is bananas well it potentially could be it's just a patent uh that is from gi.biz's patent trolling um but let's get a little bit more serious this article um i believe was uh, that article was shared by gary by the way um this one, I believe, was shared by Mr. T, I think, um, on the Discord. If you do want to share any articles, exclamation mark Discord in the chat. We'll give you the link to our uh, community Discord. In there, we do have a section called The Scoop where you can just say hello. Uh, there's all the other sections where you can say hello, but feel free to drop links to news articles in there that you would like us to cover on the next show. But this one, um, Asim has done exactly that, and this one is written by Wes Yin Pool, good guy at Eurogamer, and he says, EA issues lifetime ban to FIFA player who racially abused Ian Wright after losing a match using Wright's virtual character. Uh, the tagline says, EA Sports have stood up, and GG to Wes Yin Pool, because he usually does the best taglines. Um, 
that have absolute pun fest, but obviously he's not done that in this because do you know what? It, it doesn't need it in this. Let's just jump straight into the uh, the article. It says EA has issued a lifetime ban to a FIFA player who racially abused Ian Wright after he lost a match while playing with the Arsenal Legends in-game version. This week, Wright slammed a judge's lenient sentence for a teenager who hurled abuse uh, who hurled racial abuse at the Arsenal Legend on social media last year. 18-year-old Patrick O'Brien lost a game of FIFA after playing with the Ian Wright icon card in the Ultimate Team mode. The Irish teen then sent real-life Ian Wright awful racist abuse on Instagram, amounting to 20 messages in May 2020. O'Brien apologised and was spared a conviction after pleading guilty, leading Wright to issue a statement saying he was disappointed by the verdict. At sentencing this week, the judge said he didn't see anything to be gained by imposing a criminal conviction. He added O'Brien had showed genuine remorse for his actions and had donated €500 to the Irish network against racism. Uh, O'Brien's defending lawyer said the actions were caused by, quote, a rush of blood to the head, um, and he had never been in trouble with the police before. The court heard O'Brien had written an apology to Wright, which was accepted by the 57-year-old. <clears throat> Excuse me. EA Sports has now issued a lifetime ban to O'Brien, who has seen his FIFA account scrubbed from existence. Quote, Ian, uh, Ian Wright is a part of our EA Sports family, David Jackson, VP brand uh, EA Sports FIFA, said in a statement issued to Eurogamer. Quote, we hugely value his partnership and support and we also want him to know he has our support. Last year, Ian was subject to a terrible racist verbal attack by a player who lost a match of FIFA 20. This behaviour by the player was unacceptable on every level and we will not tolerate it. Our positive player charter guides our actions in a situation like this and we've taken the action to ban the player permanently from playing or accessing our games. Racism must stop. We are committed to continuing our work in positive play through actions that will make our communities fun, fair and safe for everyone. Um, Wright praised the response of EA in comments made on his podcast published to Spotify. Uh, quote, EA Sports Bro, okay, I'm going to butcher this, apologies, because I can't do Ian Wright speak, so I will I will try to speak in the way that Ian Wright does, but he's well too cool for me. EA Sports Bro, they stepped up for me, Wright said. After this attack, they changed their whole policy. And you know, with a company like that, the different levels, and you can imagine the legality you have to go through to change your policy, not only for me, it's for their staff, for players, the talent, the people they partner with, zero tolerance, zero tolerance and action will be taken. They even apologised to me, which I found really strange. I said to them, you don't have to apologise to me. They said, no, we do have to apologise to you simply because it was our platform that he came for you on. We have a responsibility to make people who want to use our platforms uh, are safe to do so. So it sends the message that guys of whether it's race, religion, sex, whatever, no discrimination will be tolerated. He's banned for life, totally banned for life. He can never play on there again. Uh, he can't log himself in. He can probably go and play with his mates but he's banned permanently and you know something as small as that is it's a little chip out of the massive mountain that is racism but what it proves is there is some consequence somewhere people like EA they're standing and they're saying we're going to stand on the right side of this real action that they control and they're going to stop that it just made me feel good because it's companies like that that are going to stand on the right side and people will say things like well, EA Sports have done this and EA Sports have done that. But the fact is, guys, EA Sports have stood up and said, that's wrong and we're going to make sure we do something about that. And that, for me... Uh, was why I feel so good today because there are so many things that happen in respects of racism where you and any black person and anybody in fact who's been racially abused will know that sometimes you have those moments where you're just sitting there feeling helpless and worthless so when they do things like this you know there's consequence and when there's consequence you know actions will be taken and that is why I feel good today. EA Sports is currently running a No Room for Racism campaign alongside the Premier League. Uh, I think that is the end uh, uh, oh, actually, one final uh, one final bit. We'll add that in as well. Apologies for reading the entire article, Wes, but it's it's good. So, geez. Uh, on Sunday, uh, Wright reacted to the news that Manchester United's Marcus Rashford and other players had been racially abused on social media, saying the people behind the social media platforms were not doing enough. So social media platforms potentially aren't doing enough, but according to Ian Wright, EA is definitely doing something, banning a player for life for racially abusing uh, Ian Wright. Uh, I think we all agree that this is the right thing. Uh, no no horribly placed pun intended when I say the right <laughs> thing. Um, what are your thoughts on this, Dan? Yeah, I mean, it, I think zero tolerance is the only way forward on any of these things. I mean, it's horrific in this in any day and age that that this should happen. Um, I mean, there's there's zero excuse for it at all. Like just, just 
it's it's mind boggling that, that there's people that think that that's okay. It's mind boggling, I think, that people think it's okay to do it because there was a rush of blood to the head, as he, as they describe. It's like, well, that doesn't make it any better. That doesn't excuse it. That's not. You can't just lash out in and become. You don't become racist because you're angry. You're, <laughs> you're just an angry racist. Do you know? And it's and I think that's the thing is that 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 people use it as an excuse oh it was just it was said in the heat of the moment it's like no no that that's just you that's you're tapping into something that's already there mate and that is completely unacceptable and fair play to EA for like just I think I I don't think I think we're in the way social media and and the world has evolved sort of even in the last sort of 25 years maybe is that there, there's this movement away from that people are responsible for what they say and their actions and and that they can just there's they've got the mindset of freedom of speech but they haven't got the the second half of it which is that people that there's consequences to that freedom of speech and i think that that's the bit that we're sorely missing and we have been for a lot of the time on on sort of social media platforms because it's kind of the wild west to, to, to a certain extent of like people are sort of still still even now learning how to behave on there but this is a fundamental core thing of like how you should act everywhere not just online not just in real life just everywhere you shouldn't <laughs> there's no there is no reason for it there's no excuse for it and I think you have to have a zero tolerance like reaction to it and I mean I can only go from my own experience of it like where we get it like regularly from like an insert coin account uh, we get you know uh, racism we get homophobic remarks we get you know sexist remarks and things based on like models we use or people we're working with and things like that and you know ultimately it boils down to me so like it's my decision on, on on how we handle it and and sort of our like managing director as well like where i've spoken to her about it and it's like we've got a zero tolerance approach to it as well. And I think it's the only way that you can, you can kind of work on those sort of things. Yeah. I you, you've fully just got agree. to be zero tolerant. Oh, I fully agree. Um, speaking of insert coin, um, official insert coin in the chat says that guy looks sus. Uh, agreed. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, I, I agree. I mean, Asim says, um, he, he picks up on a bit that I was going to comment, actually. He says, a bit exaggerated, but I find that judge's rationale poor, excusing a rush of blood. Does that mean if someone said, oh, I got a rush of blood and battered or assaulted that person, they'd get away with it too? Baffling. Uh, yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, I understand the kind of the logic of the application of it's out of character and it's not his normal thing. I mean, I, I, okay, fine. He's never done anything before. It's, it's the same sort of logic that you'd give to a football player that does his first tackle in a game and it just wasn't right. Okay. That's your final warning. Carry on. Okay. Oh, that's, that, I see yeah. the logic, but the reality of the situation yeah. is, <laughs> you still knew it was wrong. Yeah, but yeah, but even, even that, I mean, you don't go from, oh, I'm a nice guy to absolute racial abuse. <laughs> I mean, being no, out, no. Out, of char out of character is being a bit more angry or something, but racism and anger aren't necessarily yeah. connected. <laughs> You've made that connection and chose to, no. uh, to use that in the anger. So yeah, it's out of character. Fine. But, but being out of character and, and going to that extreme, there's, 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 there's a disconnect between those two issues for me. So, um, Absolutely. yeah, it's, I, I, I don't, I don't take that sort of, that bit there it's, it, it deserves his lifetime ban the sad thing is yeah, in absolutely. reality he's 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 probably gonna just make another account because he'll just get another xbox live or whatever yeah. it is and there's no way that ea can manage that and he'll be playing today if not already which which is how it is but um i mean the the nicest bits within it are that we've seen positive action. Uh, we're taking the, uh, the, yeah. the the positives away from from what was a horrendous thing. EA have making a, uh, taken a stance and have come out to show people that they will. Uh, don't they ban your IP? Says Gary. Oh, okay. If that's the case, then uh, yeah. yeah. Then yeah, maybe maybe it will be different. He'll have to change his whole internet. <laughs> and if he's only eighteen years old, then, it, <laughs> then it's probably mum and dad that are paying for it, so they won't be happy with that. <laughs> um. Um. It could slash should be an IP ban. Yeah, I mean, it definitely should be, in my, in my opinion as well. 
if it is, then okay, that, that's that's a little bit more uh, serious, which 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 is nice. It, it adds more weight to it. The yeah. fact that, that EA have done something anyway is a good symbol. And um, worst case scenario, someone that has made, uh, like, let's say, let's lean into what the judges said, and let's say he isn't uh, a nasty person who's done something uh, that's uh, he has done something that something that is outside of his character. Worst case from that is, okay, well, that that is the case, but we've still got 500 euros from him from the Irish Network Against Racism. But that donation to Network Against Racism, whilst it's nice to see him making a donation, is that purely because he wants to write his ways or is that just because he's got caught and he knows it will make him look good in court? So, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and if it just assuages his guilt, I mean, that's not the whole point of it, is it? It makes him feel better that he's done that. That's mm-hmm. not the point that he should what should make him what should be the driving thing is changing how he how he is and a, like working hard to atone for that like you know you know community service for it and sort of actually actively doing something anyone can effectively donate money that's kind of it's a very empty thing isn't yeah. it whereas there's no sort of actionable thing that he's done to change really it's there's no like receipt for it kind of thing. Yeah, no 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 bettering. He's not gone out of his way no, to realise no. actually, do you know what? I've said something um and I didn't understand the weight of what I was saying. So that's five hundred quid. Nice. Okay, you've still yeah, not understood yeah, the yeah. weight. You've just alleviated yourself of five hundred quid. It's cost you five hundred it's <laughs> cost you five hundred pounds to do something that you shouldn't have done. Which is right. which is Kind of a, a, a negative reinforcement in one way. Yeah. It shows you that it's bad, but you still haven't learned anything. Go out of your no. way to realize what those words mean. Realize what yeah. saying those things and sharing those messages with someone, uh, what impact that will have on them. Why saying that in the first place is bad. What has made all of that so bad? Why do those words carry weight? Learn all of that stuff and then donate 500 quid because you realize the significance of your actions. Just throwing 500 quid out That's is... is is yeah well let's see easy lip service or wallet service yeah um well fucking said says steel bonsai well, well put well put um uh pop bank says a donation looks like a pr thing where as a course or learning program looks like a person wants to learn i think that i think that's the difference as well the key difference um is does he want to learn <laughs> uh yeah. It, it being made to look good in a court shows oh he's, he's, he's learned the error of his ways um, and he's not done anything before. Kind of all goes with the character building around that, but but it's like you say, it's just it's it's just lip service. We'd like to see a little bit more, yeah. but at least he added something. At least he added something serious, and and yeah, definitely, it's nice to see it as well because companies like EA, because they're so big, can can easily get criticism. They they will get criticised fairly often on this podcast, just like everyone will get criticised on this podcast. Because because yeah. we like to we like to whinge. Uh, no no, genuinely when people when people mess up, they deserve it. But you don't often get the same praise for companies of EA's size, and it's quite nice to see that going beyond EA Sports uh, banned him because that also is kind of emptied. But to see what impact that means, so the reason I wasn't going to read through the full. Um, quote from Ian Wright, which is why I kind of said apologies for Wesley Poole for stealing his entire article. Um, but as I kept reading it, you could feel the weight of what that action means, what that level of support yeah. means from EA. So it's nice to see that. It's nice to see that EA have, have done something there. Um, uh, racism is awful, but the fact he was playing FIFA, he came off the game, searched on social media for Ian Wright, and then sent him messages, speaks volumes. He went out of his way to find him, and 20 messages really? as well. Ridiculous, yeah. ridiculous. Um, a lot of K's says, says yo, yo, hi, yo, <laughs> welcome in. Uh, uh, yes, there we go. I, I, I don't know how you want me to pronounce that name, so I'll just say K. Yeah, K. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, let's move ahead. So, so GG's to EA in that situation. Um, and let's go from one large corporation that we spoke about to another. I think we've had this conversation pretty recently. We have had this conversation pretty recently. Um, as as Mr. Tassim Anvia, the noted industry leaker, he say, essentially said this. Um, so for, for those that don't know, Asim does work um, at Take Two, Two K, um, uh, Take Two, other parent company of Rockstar. Uh, Asim doesn't have any behind the scenes information on Rockstar, um, but it just turns out that he does have 
pri- uh, quite a logical uh, brain, as we can see. I don't know what you're on about, says Asim. You know, I don't know what you mean. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> um, the other day we were talking about GTA 6 being a remaster of GTA Vice City, I think it was. I can't remember what it was at the time. Um, and and Asim's own personal opinion is that GTA is not a rock star. Uh, GTA is not a rock star. <laughs> Rockstar is not a remaster company. Um, and he said that, obviously, with the caveat of I'm not working on that game, so I don't know. Anyway, um, after Asim gave us that ahead of time leak, I mean, uh, his uh, opinions, should I say, uh, <laughs> this article has popped up uh, yesterday, written by Tom Ivan at VGC, and it says Rockstar owner discusses remaster strategy, says it's not interested in simple ports. Take two says Rockstar can't deliver a great experience by just doing a simple port. That's the tagline. And into the article it says, the CEO of Rockstar owner Take Two has discussed the company's approach to remastering older titles and its effort to differentiate itself from its competition in this area. Rockstar is currently gearing up to bring a remastered version of GTA 5 to PS5, Xbox Series X and S in the second half of calendar 2021. Speaking during the Morgan Stanley Technology Media and Telecom Conference, longest name in the world, uh, on Wednesday, transcribed by VGC, Take Two boss Strauss Zelnick uh, was asked how he feels about remasters potentially becoming a bigger part of the company's strategy going forward. Quote, uh, I'm not sure that uh, there will be a bigger part of the strategy, he responded. Remastering has always been a part of the strategy. We've done uh, differently than the competition. We don't just port titles over. We actually take the time to do the very best job we can, making the title different for the new release, for the new technology that we're launching it on. So we improve the technology, we upgrade the visuals, and we make performance enhancements. And that's why I think our remastered titles uh, typically do so well. On GTA 5's upcoming next-gen console version, Zelnik said he was confident the remaster would deliver a strong experience for players. Uh, quote, we've done great with the Mafia series, for example, great games, uh, and Grand Theft Auto V is now heading into its third generation, which is incredible, he said. It was a standard bearer when it was launched. It continued to be the standard bearer in the second generation, and we'll see how Grand Theft Auto does in the next generation. Obviously, I'm confident that Rockstar is going to deliver just a great experience, but you can't do that if you're just doing a simple port. Uh, during Take-Two's third quarter earnings call in February, Zelnik offered a non-committal response when asked about the potential for remastering older Grand Theft Auto games. In a Q&A session, an analyst suggested it was likely that a significant portion of GTA 5 players might have uh, might never have played earlier games in the series. Given the huge appetite for Grand Theft Auto content, he asked for takes two perspectives on further remasters. Uh, it's a great and encouraging question, Zelnik responded. I'm kind of inclined uh, inclined to leave it as more uh, more as a statement than a question, and any update on our release schedule will come from Rockstar Games. Absolute nailed that PR answer there, by the way. Didn't answer it at all, GG's. Uh, Zelnik rolled out uh, this line again on Wednesday when asked during the Morgan Stanley cor- uh, conference if if he could provide an update and when Grand, Thor- uh, Grand Theft Auto 6 will be released. So Rockstar hasn't announced any new titles for the market, and whether, when there's an announcement to be made, it will come from Rockstar. So I'll probably leave you there, and I don't think you would expect anything different from me, he said. Okay, we'll leave the last little bits there, But the gist of it is uh, Rockstar are happy with their porting, um, but they're not really interested in doing simple ports. And we can probably assume from that the same goes for remasters too. Would would you like remastered GTA games or would you like to see Rockstar going into new experiences? What are your thoughts? Uh, Well, I'm I'm a massive Rockstar fan. (laughs) Um, and and love all their games. And I think that part of me would like to see the older games come back, but I think the the draw of new worlds and new characters and and uh, new experiences is, is is stronger. I I I'd want to see what they do, uh, what more they can do, and what how they can sort of ex- and change those things. And I, I've got a real thing for where they go back to the same locations, but expand them out, which they did on, on Red Dead Redemption 2. They did it in, in GTA 5. They, they sort of build those work, build on the worlds they've already got. So you kind of got that sort of callback already. Um, but yeah, I, I do really enjoy, like, I, I think I'd, I'd get more out of a new game than an old game. No, I, I agree. I agree. I absolutely adore Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Being able to, 
walk around in a bright white suit with your uh, sleeves rolled up <laughs> uh, and like full on yep. aviator shades. Yes, please. Um, and and the soundtrack, absolutely incredible as well. So there's, there's, there's yeah. that too. So I would love that. That said, if I was to step back into the world of Vice City, then I would like a Vice City 2. Give me, give me same characters, maybe, um, if not entirely yeah. new characters, but in a new uh, story arc. It could follow on. It could be completely separate. It could be start again. They could be alongside it and have some crossovers. So you you see Tommy Vassetti from um, uh, from those days. Toby says this isn't Pez. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's just the halftime team talk. That's all it is. Uh, good morning, though. Good morning. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, yeah. I would like. I, I'd like the new experience. I mean, it's always nice to say I loved yeah. um, Vice City, and as much as I love Vice City, San Andreas was obviously the, the better game because it came after. It was just overall the better game. The, maybe it didn't have the same audio and the same art style that resonated as much, but whilst I love those games so, so much, there's not rose-tinted glasses because rose-tinted implies that they are remembered better than they were. They are really good, but they just won't mm. be... As good, it's not the same, yeah. Is it? If if you play it again for the second time, you're either damaging the experience by changing it too much, or you're trying too much to honor the experience by mirroring it, which is just yeah. it doesn't add anything. So yeah, give us something new. Give us something new. And Rockstar yeah. saying that they're not interested in simple ports, and and that yeah, that's good for me. I'm on board with that. Mm. Uh, yes. Official insert coin says GTA 4 remaster, please. <laughs> <laughs> hey, cousin, let's go bowling. <laughs> No, I do not want to go bowling. You rang me like <laughs> seven seconds ago. Leave me alone. Hey, Roman. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, Strauss is a legend, by the way, says Asim. We got regular updates from him via meetings. Proper top man. Top banter. Well, You've you got to have a good bit of banter. There you go. Um, uh, oh, oh, no, I thought I was... There was an alert coming in then, but it was just the noise in my ear. Nice, it's fine. I'm hearing things. There you go. Uh, they need to add more to the single player of GTA Five. Uh, uh, they balls up. Gay Tony was one of the best. Uh, the balls up. The, the ball. Oh, the ballad. Okay, there you go. You've absolutely been done over by Autocrat. Yeah. <laughs> the ballad of Gay Tony was one of the best things they'd previously done, in my opinion. Do you know, I never played the ballad of Gay Tony. Um, it was, uh, it was really good. Was it? it? Was really good. Yeah. It, which one was? What was that? Three or four? Can That's I... four. Uh, that was yeah. That was four, and it was uh, there was another one as well, wasn't there? There was another one with Ballad of, Bay, uh, Ballad of Gay Tony, and then there was another. What was the other one as well? There was a second one, wasn't there? Yeah, there was. There... But I remember playing through them, and they were like, "Oh no, they are really good." Oh, see, I, 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 the only GTA add-on that I not GTA, the only Rockstar add-on that I played f through. And I just didn't enjoy it at all, partially because my my sights were set higher than anyone could ever achieve ever again. And it was it was playing through Red, Red Dead Redemption and being blown away by how good Red Dead Redemption was, and then playing Red Dead Undead <clears throat> Nightmare, and it was it oh, was yeah, yeah. it just didn't have the same effect. So I, I didn't I, I've never really touched any of the DLC sort of add-on things because of that one. I probably played the yeah, worst yeah. example and then didn't, didn't touch the others in reality, but. Yeah, I never played Ballad of Gay Tony, although I d I, did I get it for something? I, I don't know. I, no, I've never played it anyway, so I could, <laughs> I could tell you that. <laughs> um, uh, Vice City is insane, says Gary. That is true. I'd rather have a new GTA, says Luke. Uh, replaying the same thing essentially for a third generation has very diminishing returns. I mean, I, I don't mind GTA Five Online um, coming for the next gen because... That is a whole different thing in itself. Obviously, the fact that you're not following storylines and you're kind of building your own narrative as you go. I love that idea that GTA yeah. Five is 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 a machine, is a monster. So that I don't mind that so much. But yeah, I probably wouldn't play through GTA Five again, having done that on the three and some of on the four. Um, I wouldn't play through it on the five uh, for sure. Uh, I will stick to my opinion that GTA 4 is the weakest GTA since it went 3D, uh, says Garrett. Um, the biker one, can't remember its name now. Ah, yeah, uh, yeah it was, that's it. The Lost and I Damned. Said Lost and Damned, yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah, I absolutely remembered it and 100% did just read Asim's comment. It was a complete... <laughs> <in my mind. laughs> yeah. um, I'd probably agree. GTA 4 was probably uh, the one that I enjoyed the least. Um, it was mainly down to the driving because you, you don't realize how much time you spend driving in gta yeah and and i i, I just i couldn't <laughs> it was just... very tight wasn't it the driving was really it was all corners whereas some of the 
other maps are much like the the vice cities and the the los santos is a, a long straight drives or you know like sweeping sort of vistas whereas in 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 vice city it was all very like ee, 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 ee. <laughs> no, not vice city um in uh Four. what one was it? yeah what was it what was the city in that i can't remember what it was called new york yeah, the, yes, the, New, the York. New York. <laughs> yeah. um, I like the uh, technical terms there. The, the streets were all... Eh, 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 eh. So, so if, if you wondered what type turning is, there you go. Um, <laughs> cool. On that, we will move into our final story, which is just a nice little wrap-up. We tend to try to finish on something that is uh, useful to you guys out there. So as you can probably tell from this one, I'm not straying too far because we're staying in the world of Take-Two, at least for some of it, and EA, who we've just been speaking about as well. If you have yourself an Xbox or maybe a PC, I haven't looked on which pl uh, platforms these are coming to, but... Um, hopefully the article will tell us a little bit more but Alex Calvin at VG247 says NBA 2K21 there's your take two and Star Wars Squadrons and there's your EA are coming to Xbox Game Pass so it's a sports-tastic month as Football Manager and NHL also look to come to the subscription service Star Wars Squadrons and NBA 2K21 are coming to Xbox Game Pass this month in fact 2K's basketball hit is launching on Microsoft's subscription service tomorrow March 4th uh, for both console uh, console and the Tech Giant streaming service. There you go. EA Star Wars Squadrons, meanwhile, is down as coming to console at some point in March. In a blog post, Microsoft wrote that Madden NFL 21 is already out on Xbox Game Pass via EA Play, while Football Manager 2021 is coming to Game Pass uh, for both Xbox and PC tomorrow. Finally, Hockey Hit NHL 21 is launching via EA Play next month. Uh, news that Madden NFL 21, Star Wars Squadrons, and NHL 21 will come into EA Play, and therefore X -Ga Xbox Game Pass Ultimate broke at the end of the last month. Meanwhile, titles including The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt and Bloodstained Ritual of the Night are leaving Game Pass in March. We will pause there. So there you go. If you have yourself an Xbox, or even a PC, uh, and you have Game Pass Ultimate, then you Get yourself some new games. Star Wars Squadrons uh, and NBA 2K21, as well as others, are coming to the service this month. So there you go. Some nice stuff to keep you busy as we Fantastic roll. Fantastic games. Roll head, yeah, b incredible games. I mean, I say incredible games. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest because our sim is in the chat. NBA 2K21. It's not. It's not very good. It's not very. No. It, it just how good does it look? The next gen gameplay. I mean, I, I, admittedly, I'm terrible. A basketball game because I don't know the rules. I tried to play it like a football game and it doesn't work the same, but it looks ridiculous. And as well as that, Star Wars Squadrons as well. So nice. Yeah. Nice. Um I have EA play, so I will probably go do some tinkering. Um do you have do you have Game Pass? I do, yeah. I use it a lot. We use it for when we do streams and and just generally at home as well. It's it's fantastic. I, you know it's just such good value. It sounds like it's, it always sounds like it's an ad. It it's, just... it's, it's just <laughs> like such an amazing like program and how they update it and what they add to it and the fact that you know all of the um, you know the, the sort of killer killer IP kind of thing for it like your gears and your and your halos and things like that are on it straight away. It's, that's amazing. Yeah, it is incredible. We. Uh along with pretty much everyone else in the industry will uh, refer to it as the best deal in gaming and and there's an ongoing joke yeah. as well with he's not been in the chat this morning but robo daniel i don't know if he's lurking if he is apologies for shouting you out um he uh loves ea game pass so so whenever we have a conversation he's yeah. usually here uh, to the point where bibi says you mentioned <laughs> you mentioned game pass three times quickly and then robo daniel appears <laughs> so yeah we talk about it pretty, pretty, pretty often <laughs> it's it's an incredible incredible deal uh i don't have an xbox of the next gen variety so i don't have it but when i do guaranteed that's straight in my basket uh and on that bombshell we are going to wrap things up thank you everyone for being with us throughout uh another hour of gameplay talkings nice nice we've had a lot of news i'll recap the headlines for those that haven't seen so nintendo switch is planning to bring a larger model with a an oled samsung display later in this year the switch pro as it's uh been known by most playstation will potentially counter that by letting you play your playstation with a banana obviously why not ea bans a racist and as they as they should they've done a good job with that ggs to them rockstar um will not have any interest in simple ports uh going forward so expect big games from them which is what we want and speaking of big games nba 2k21 and star wars squadrons will be added to xbox game pass so if you've got an xbox and you want some new gameplay experiences there you go uh so thank you everyone for joining us um a reminder that we do go live uh each and every single weekday at 10 a.m 
ish uh, on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream reports and we go live with the scoop with your stories so if you have any news that you want to share feel free to drop the stories in our discord gary thank you for dropping the link in the chat there so just go into the discord drop the link feel free to give uh, feel free to give your thoughts and impressions and Hasaf has just dropped 100 bits which scared the crap out of me then because that was loud <laughs> uh but thank you very much for the 100 bits dude um uh, so yeah feel free to drop the stories in the discord with your thoughts and impressions we will give you our thoughts and impressions on the show the very next day which will be at 10 a.m ish again um bonsai thank you for the socials obviously feel free to share the stories on the socials if you can get into the discord too um so you got a busy day ahead planned mr long yeah um just loads of plotting and planning for the the rest of the well the rest of the year i guess <laughs> for today and then um yeah tomorrow we're gearing up for our next uh twitch stream uh insert coin uh twitch stream at uh 12 noon uh, official insert coin and uh that'll be with uh chris slight who'll be hosting and me um yeah and we've, we'll have a launch and a sort of a launch and a restock combo pack that will that will hit about midday tomorrow on our store. So keep an eye out for that. Nice, nice. Okay, well, we will disappear for the day. There could potentially be an additional stream this afternoon, depending on how things go off stream. I will drop a raid on someone else. If you want to get any extra channel points, feel free to stick around for the raid. We'll find someone to drop the raid on. Uh, other than that, we will be back this afternoon and then uh, tomorrow morning for the scoop. And then after the scoop, we'll all drop in to watch official insert coin to see all the news and, and, and all the breaking bits and, and restock stuff. Yes, nice. <laughs> nice. Um, I have just typed exclamation mark insert coin in the chat as well. Obviously, we are part of the coin army, so we will be streaming um, on insert coin later this month, actually. Is it two weeks on Wednesday, I think is ours? Yes, um, about that. Yes which is part two of uh, A Way Out for us, which, which funnily enough, you actually get from um, EA Play. So there you go. If you want if you okay. want games on EA Play, like Star Wars Squadrons, which we'll get in Game Pass, they, you can play A Way Out there. So part two of A Way Out will take place uh, all over on Official Insert Coin. So there you go. Official Insert Coin is in the chat. Please feel free to click on their name and then you know hit the follow. Nice. Cool. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, thank you very much for joining us as well, Mr. Long. It's been a pleasure to have oh, you on the thank show. Thank you. Thank you. It's uh, been a pleasure to do. Nice, nice. Uh, do you know, I, I need to, I didn't actually brief you this before we started, so I'm going to tell you on air, and everyone's just going to pretend <laughs> that I'm not telling you, so it all seems supernatural. When we finish the show, <laughs> our wrap-up is you, that emote there says stay frosty, so so that's kind of like, have a good day and stay frosty. So so Mr. Mr. Long, <laughs> completely naturally and not scripted whatsoever, <laughs> would you like to end the show? <laughs> stay frosty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>